I greet you in Lord's holy name. Uh, once again, I welcome each one of you for this uh, second day of our Bible study from the book of First Peter. Uh, if uh, somebody has joined uh, today, I just want to tell you that we had uh, introduction yesterday and then we are going into the Bible study. Uh, let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we are thankful to you for adding one more day in our lives and for your protection in this whole day. And we thank you for the privilege of studying uh, your word in this fashion. We thank you for the technology and we thank you for all the comforts we enjoy. And also we thank you for the fellowship you are enjoying around your word. Even in this evening, as you're going to meditate your word, we pray, oh God, that you honor your word among us. At the same time, we pray for our brothers and sisters all over the world who are suffering because of the coronavirus. And even in our country, as some of our brothers and sisters are affected, we pray, oh God, that you be gracious to them. At the, uh, in, a, in a larger sense, we pray for uh, your wisdom to the leaders so that they will handle the situation properly. And we pray, oh God, that you be gracious to the humankind in this earth. Lord, we are going into the study of your word. We pray that you uh, speak to me and speak to us. In Jesus' precious name, we humbly pray. Amen. As usual, we look back and then we will see what uh, has happened yesterday. As part of the introduction, we were looking at Peter's life as a transformed person. There are many, many experiences we could highlight on the life of Peter. And then when we are going to the first Peter, it is part of the general epistles. There are seven general epistles and part of it. And then we know that uh, chapter 2, verse 11 and 12 are the uh, important key words, uh, key verses. In fact, before that, he talks about salvation and sanctification. And after that, he talks about submission and suffering. In between, he gives a challenge to the readers. In that way, three words, salvation, submission, and suffering, we cannot afford to miss it when you are studying First Peter. And also we yesterday, we looked at uh, in detail the five callings uh, which are highlighted in this book, calling for sanctification, calling to serve, calling to suffer, calling to share, and also calling for eternal glory. We call it as a Shakina glory. Okay. And then uh, we can easily divide uh, these uh, three chapters with their title. Uh, maybe these uh, uh, five uh, chapters with three titles. But uh, I was talking about nine paragraphs so that it will be good for us to study the whole book with paragraph wise. And uh, today we are going to look at the first uh, three paragraphs, which comes from chapter 1, verse 1, till chapter 2, verse 12. <clears throat> I take this title from Warren Worsby, Living in Hope, Living in Har Holiness, and Living in Harmony. When I finish this study, I want you to take note of these three words. Today we're going to concentrate on these three words, hope, holiness, and harmony. And uh, God willing, tomorrow we'll be looking at two important uh, uh, paragraphs that's on submission, submission in society, submission at home and in the church in the context of suffering. Okay. Persecuted church uh, should focus on submission. That's what we are going to look at tomorrow. And definitely we need to look at the third uh, uh, paragraph tomorrow that will be on suffering. That's suffering on unjust reason. So if we have time, please uh, read uh, chapter 2, verses 13 to chapter 3, verses 22 uh, tomorrow for our study. God willing, on day after tomorrow, we'll be looking at the last three paragraphs, which talks about stewards of God's grace, suffering for being a Christian, and shepherding and serving humbly. In that way, uh, these are the nine paragraphs we can concentrate. As I told you yesterday, underneath there are definitely uh, subtitles or paragraphs. But uh, for our convenience, I keep uh, nine paragraphs. Even today, as uh, we are going to look at these three paragraphs, we'll be looking at some of the subtitles underneath. But don't forget, 
hope, holiness, and harmony. These are the three important words which come out, uh, which come out very clearly uh, in these passages, or otherwise, uh, up to chapter uh, two, verse twelve. Okay, uh, let's hear God's word. Today, I have requested three of my dear friends to read. The first one is going to read chapter one, verses one to twelve. That is the uh, Janusha, the EU secretary for Nagarkoil ICU. Very near to Kanyakumari, she lives, Nagarkoil ICU. She is the EU secretary for this uh, uh, year. Second paragraph, I requested uh, their Rinit from. Hyderabad, 20th study. He was, he was excited to be, be, be with us in our study. Rinit is a president of uh, Karunia Nagar ICU. And the third uh, paragraph is uh, chapter 1, verses 22 to chapter 2, verse 12. That will be read by a Bangalore ICU student leader, Bimsi. Right now, she's at home in Kotagiri. And all these three friends are ready to read, I think. In case if they have any problem with their mic, I requested our regular reader, Sister Anu from Ranchi, to be ready for that. Okay, and uh, let's hear God's word. Chapter 1, verse 1 onwards, dear Janusha will be reading for us. Reading from the first chapter, verses 1 to 12. First Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 to 12. This letter is from Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I am writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners in the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. God the Father knew you and chose you long ago, and His Spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed Him and have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more grace and peace. All praise to God the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again. Because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, now we live with great expectation that we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show you that your faith is genuine. It has been tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. This salvation was something even the prophets wanted to know more apart when they prophesied about this gracious salvation prepared for you. They wondered what time or situation the spirit of Christ within them was talking about when he told them in advance about Christ's suffering and his great glory afterward. They were told that their messages were not for themselves but for you. And now this good news has been announced to you by those who preached in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. It is all so wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen. Here ends the reading. Praise be to God. Thank you. Renit? Uh, yes, Uncle, I hope you can hear my voice. Yes, yes. Yes, yes yeah. Renit. So I'm reading from NIV, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 to 21. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who is who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. 
Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your lives as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last minutes for your sake. Through him, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. First Thank Vincy? Yes, Uncle. Yes, ma'am. Continue. Yes, Vincy, you can continue. Not sure. Reading from chapter 12. Chapter 1. Hello. Yes, yes, Vincy. Yes, chapter 1. Reading, verse reading from chapter 1, verse 22 to chapter 2, verse 12. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander for every kind. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now, to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. And a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are cho a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world, to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagan that, though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Thank you, Vincy. I sincerely thank Janusha, Rinit, and Vincy for this lovely reading. Let's uh, look at uh, the first paragraph living in hope and uh, you can easily divide this passage into three uh, sub paragraphs first two verses it is not simple greetings uh, peter the apostle writing to the chosen people who are scattered around he adds a new dimension of salvation facts related to christian life we are going to study that passage a uh, little later. Verses 3 to 9. <clears throat> there are many blessings to the Christians midst of suffering. <laughs> Definitely, faith and hope comes there. Blessings midst of suffering. Verses 3 to 9. 
that continues with that third uh, point. These are the blessings long back, the old timers, the prophets were looking for. Even the angels were eager to know that. That's what Peter writes. It's about uh, the present, it's about the past, it's about the future. <coughs> Peter talks about three great facts of the Christian life. When you look at the introduction part, uh, these are the words is coming very clearly. You are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God. In fact, we all know that in our salvation, the triune God is involved. And by the way, my dear brothers and sisters, in our EU, we are taught uh, that uh, if you want to find out a cult group or a people who are in the wrong teaching side, you can easily find out with two important factors. Number one is authority of the scriptures. If they have a challenge with uh, uh, the authority of the scriptures, we can consider them as uh, not evangelicals and they are not uh, strong uh, Bible-based Christians. Second one, it's the Trinity, especially in terms of the uh, Christology the belief of the uniqueness of Christ. Okay, uniqueness of Christ in the context of Trinity, if they believe, then uh, there won't be any problem as such when they have other minor uh, deviations. Authority of the scriptures and uniqueness of Christ in the context of the Trinity. And now he, we know that in, when you're talking about salvation, Paul has written in many of his uh, epistles and Peter here, straight away introduce the triune God for salvation. You are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God. You, may can, you can take it uh, in a very simple way, but as I have mentioned here, don't be panic. Okay? It's a foreknowledge of God. Uh, some of the versions as uh, Janusha has reading, it's long back. It's uh, earlier, far before uh, you were born. God has chosen you. If it is so, why I should unnecessarily worry about uh, uh, my present uh, problems? Okay? Don't be panic. We have to be careful. Of course, I'm not saying that you have to be careless. In this time of uh, whole world is in panic and uh, everybody is anxious. We need to be a little relaxed because we are chosen by the foreknowledge of God. If God has chosen you and me, how much he has concern for you and me and how much he will take care of us. Don't be panic. Uh, this uh, afternoon, uh, one of my good friends uh, doing his uh, master's uh, in English, he was just discussing with me, uncle, I want to do my PhD and I want to teach, I want to do. Then he was a bit panic about his uh, future plans. Then I told him, Sam, look at the present. Whole world is in panic. What's going to happen in near future? They are all in trouble. So don't worry, just relax in God's presence. I told him that's what I'm preparing right now for evening, for evening Bible study. Okay, so don't be panic about your future. Just relax. God knows you very, very well. Secondly, Peter says, you are chosen to be consecrated by the Holy Spirit. Okay? It is not your own effort. It is not by simply having faith in God, hope in future, you cannot lead a life. You need to depend on the Holy Spirit. Without His help, you cannot be convicted of your sins. You cannot lead a holy life. Right in the beginning, he says, you are consecrated by the Holy Spirit. I don't have enough time to tell you the importance of being controlled by the Holy Spirit, uh, our understanding of the Holy Spirit. You may come from different church background. You may have your own understanding of Holy Spirit. Be sure of it. As you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the Spirit of God is, uh, uh, has come into your heart. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. 
then as you allow him to control your life for your sanctification, you need to depend on the Holy Spirit. You are consecrated, not by only with your faith. It is work of the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, interesting. He uses two words about the work of Jesus, the Son. You are chosen for obedience and for sprinkling by the blood of Jesus. Wow. Two uh, dimensions he is bringing out. Okay. In fact, uh, the commentators very rightly say, I take this point from uh, William Barclay. Very beautifully he says, as uh, Peter is using this word sprinkling by the blood of Christ, and um, as other version says about uh, the, uh, the blood of Christ is very clearly mentioned, we need to go back. Definitely, Peter is talking about uh, the Old Testament idea of blood. Three things clearly comes out. Leviticus chapter 14 verses 1 to 7 talks about cleansing. A leper who became sick and he was cleansed, uh, he was uh, healed and when he has to come back to his community, so he needs to be cleansed by the blood. That's what it is talking about in Leviticus 14 chapter. Clearly, physical cleansing and uh, that is by the blood. Second one, very interesting. It is from Exodus chapter 29. There, it talks about Aaron. I'm sorry, it is about uh, uh, setting apart of holy things for God. There, we, we know about, we need to sprinkle the blood for setting apart. That's what exactly we talk about holiness in First Peter verses 13 onwards. The second paragraph talks about holiness is nothing but this being set apart. Okay, we'll go into look at a little later, but keep that in mind. For that also, sprinkling of the blood is needed. Third one, very powerful, Exodus chapter 24 verses 1 to 8 where we see that uh, uh, Aaron and his uh, priests were set apart for God's work. And there, the God the Father has given the law to the people. And uh, look at uh, Exodus chapter 24, verse 8. Moses then took the blood. Hear that. Moses then took the blood, sprinkled it on the people and said, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Take time to look at the whole passage. Two times the people confessed. They said, we will be uh, people who are committed to obey okay we will will be obeying that's what they said and to them uh, Moses sprinkled his blood the blood which was there already the animals blood and now Peter beautifully says that blood of Christ is sprinkled on you for a disciplined obedience okay of course, you can take it simply as obedience. And in these days, uh, we obey with a heavy heart. Some of our non-Christian friends obey their gods with, out of fear. No, that's not expected of us. Whenever it is needed, I can obey. Or whenever it is possible, I can obey. Or I can obey out of fear. No, I need to have a disciplined obedience so that my relationship with God through the blood of Christ will be in a proper way. Beautifully highlighted in first two verses. We need to go forward. There are uh, 37 verses we need to meditate today. Second, para, uh, second passage talks about three fundamental characteristics of salvation. Okay. Yesterday, sir, we have seen that. In, even in general epistles, 
these three words, hope, faith, and love, comes when we are meditating on 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. Paul is talking about it. These are the three important fundamental characteristics. Here it comes. It talks about hope. That's the reason we have titled it as uh, Living in Hope for this first paragraph, because right after the greeting, verse 3, it says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Not just blood alone, not on the death on the cross. It is through the resurrection. And it is hope, a living hope, living hope. Okay? And uh, it is a basic characteristics of a believer. If you have the new birth, you need to have the hope. My dear brothers and sisters, uh, we have this hope. And do we have that living hope? Is it dead hope? Or is it a blind hope? No. Peter, right in the beginning, he says about a living hope. Faith, it continues, and it talks about uh, the faith in terms of uh, the finished work of Christ. And uh, because of that, our faith in Christ and faith for Christian living is tested through, uh, through our uh, sufferings. He's talking about it. After yesterday's class, one of our good friend, an EU student, has asked me uh, through personal WhatsApp, after seeing my last uh, slide, if you have any doubts, uh, please contact me through WhatsApp and mail. And I appreciate him for asking this very good question. What's the difference between faith and hope? After looking at Hebrew 11.1, 1, I'm confused. So please uh, explain to me, uncle. Uh, that's what his question was. I simply replied to him saying that faith uh, is talking about our present day uh, depending on God. Faith in Christ. And faith uh, it's about a present. Hope comes out of faith. It is about the future. Okay? This is a simple difference we can make it. There may be overlapping uh, words coming out, faith and hope. But simple explanation, faith is our present, our depending, our believing, uh, what we believe right now comes out of faith. And the result of faith is a hope. Okay? Uh, again, I strongly recommend you have to go back to Romans chapter 5. At least the first paragraph you have to study. 1 to 11. Okay, Romans chapter 5 verses 1 to 11 is a powerful passage you need to study. Faith brings hope. Hope is for the future. Okay, he does not stop there. He talks about love. Look at that. He talks about uh, uh, love. How true it is. It is connected very well with hope and faith. Normally we think that John talks about love too much, but today we are going to concentrate on the importance of love. Peter talks about it very clearly. Okay? And in this pa passage itself, he talks about love with a great joy. Fundamental characteristics of a believer. Let's go forward. The subdivisions in the first paragraph talks about foretelling of the glory. Okay? In the context of salvation, in the context of hope for our future, Peter takes us back to the past. The prophets, the Old Testament writers, uh, about them, he talks. Three things I have to highlight here. Searching mind. They were searching. And uh, it is God who reveals to them. Even when you look at uh, Habakkuk and other prophetical books, we know that God speaks to the people so that prophets can take the message to the people. And uh, the people of God were warned by the prophets who God thus says the Lord. So God is revealing and the uh, prophets were searching. And in uh, verse 10, I was so thrilled to see that searched intently 
and with greatest care, not with great care, with greatest care. Okay, the Old Testament prophets with the greatest care, with the greatest care, care they were searching. They had a searching mind. Even now, because you are participating in the Bible study, I know that you have a keen interest to search God's word for our present time and for the future. God is a reveal of his truth. And Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. But do we have such a search intently and with the greatest care? Just think of it. Spoke of the sufferings and of the glory of Christ. The Old Testament prophets, they're not talking only about the glory. They talked about sufferings. Even Psalms, they were talking about sufferings. Even Moses, when he was uh, giving a prophetical way of Christ uh, crucified on the cross, talked about it. Suffering, suffering. My dear brothers and sisters, glory without suffering is not a real glory at all. Psalm 23, Isaiah chapter 52, verses 13 to chapter 53, verse 12. That's known as a very famous suffering servant songs. There are four suffering servant songs in Isaiah after 42 onwards. This is the last and the final one. Chapter 52, verses 13 to 53, verses 12. Okay, spokes of suffering and glory of Christ. Thirdly, they spoke of the glorious deliverance of God for his people. And they were longing for it. And we are experiencing it. And we are enjoying it. That's what Peter is talking about. Foretelling of the glory. It's about the past, but writing in the context of the future for us. Let's go to the second paragraph. It is a little smaller, but two Powerful thoughts are coming. We need to take time. Challenge to live differently. My dear brother and sister, my brothers and sisters, think of it. We are called for lead a holy life. We are called to fear God. These are two, two important aspects which comes out very clearly. Called to be holy verses 13 to 16. And uh, I'm sure that as you're reading, you might have observed it. Verse 13, it starts with therefore. Clearly, the next paragraph starts, therefore. Then he mentions very clearly, Peter mentions very clearly, with minds, not with heart, not just emotions alone, with minds, that, that are alert and fully sober. My dear brothers and sisters, let me stop here and wanted to warn you, let your Christianity, let your experience not come out of just feelings from heart. We need to have mind also. I'm not against uh, feelings. I'm not against heart. Jeremiah says the all problem rooted from uh, heart. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. But later, in our New Testament writing, Paul writes much about it, and Peter here very clearly mentions, be careful about your mind, with minds that are alert and fully sober. And Jesus said, love your God with your whole strength, with all your spirit, and with all your mind, with all your mind. My dear brothers and sisters, these days, as you're talking about salvation, as you're talking about the great truth of the gospel, we need to help our dear brothers and sisters in the community, in the society, in the campuses, to use their mind. Don't tell them that you keep our mind out and I will give you new truth and accept it. That is wrong. That's unbiblical. That's devilish. Whoever say that you leave your mind outside, and we will give you a new thought, new idea that is not biblical. Tell them that you come out, use your mind, and love God wholeheartedly. Okay? Mind. I don't have enough time to stress that point. Let's use our mind 
and enjoy our Christian life. Holiness comes out of our mind, not out of our heart. Some of us will feel guilty and that feeling guilty puts us off. We know that our God is a holy God. How dare I can involve in unholy things. I know that I live in a fallen world. So my, with the own, only with the help of the Holy Spirit, I can lead a holy life. Use your mind. Use your mind. Have practi practical obedience. Practical obedience. Okay? You can fast and pray. And you can do many, many Christian disciplines. Sincerely. If so, what's the difference between the nominal Christians, what they do as a uh, rituals, and what about the non-Christians who they also have tremendous uh, uh, rituals for obedience to their gods? Your righteousness definitely should be far better than the righteousness of the Pharisees. That's what Jesus told his disciples. Have practical obedience. Grow in holiness. Grow in holiness. It is not an one-day experience. Already we started talking about it. When you're talking about sanctification, I told you, it is a process. In our day-to-day -day experience, being, being, being filled with the Holy Spirit, we grow in holiness. We are called to be holy because we worship a holy God with all fear and trembling. We need to go to our living God who is holy. When he comes to us, we cannot stand before him. We cannot go near to him. Even in this passage where Moses was sprinkling on these people, in the beginning, you can see that only Moses can go up and can talk to God, including the high priest Aaron, and other priests cannot go near to him. People are far away. Holy God, holy God. And this is a privilege through Christ we can go near to the Holy God. Let's grow in holiness. Call to fear God. This thought, foreigners, exile, and um, sojourners, different verse, uh, versions have these different words. Even in this uh, whole paragraph we studied, in these three paragraphs we studied, this passage is come, this thought is coming at least three times very clearly. In the beginning, and now, and later, uh, in chapter 2, verse uh, 11 onwards, as foreigners and exiles. We are not of this world. Jim Reeves, we like his songs so much. The world is not mine. Beautiful, beautiful. We live sometimes as if we are going to live eternally here. Hold on to our money, hold on to our positions, hold on to our things. And we don't think of uh, we are foreigners to this world. Brothers, sisters, let's have fear of God because we are going to live in this world for a short time. Okay? Maybe for some of us it could be 90 years, but most of us it could be less than that. Okay, that's not a big thing as such, but we are only foreigners in this world. We are bought with a price. He talks about it. Why we need to fear God? It is not a cheap thing. It's a costly affair. That's what he's talking about. With the precious blood, Jesus has saved you. So definitely, we have to connect this paragraph with the introduction. Clearly, he talks about it. With the precious blood, we are bought. If it is so, how much we need to fear God? Okay? How much we need to fear God? Thirdly, he talks about faith and hope in God. Clearly, he leads us to that point. He is chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in the last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God. Hear me, verse 21. Through him, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so, your faith and hope are in God. Okay? Because of that, we, are, we fear God. Okay? We have a faith and hope in God that's not a cheap salvation. It's a costly affair. We need to fear God. 
this evening we have come to the bible study if we have if we don't have such a fear of god let's check ourselves let's go to the third paragraph little long let's take time we belong to the people of god okay harmony that's what uh, varun vaspi talks about harmony how much we need to take time to think of it another important factor in christian life i am saved one day i will die or jesus will come back i'll go to heaven that's not the christianity we are talking about we have to lead a holy life we need to be part of the community of god's people and we need to show the christian character in the society very important very important some of us lead a life something like a a day will come i will be with christ i am going okay least bother about others least bother about uh, uh, our own uh, uh, christian witness look at this four headings i have given under this point new life it's continuation of verse 21 new spiritual house wow i am not alone i am in a house constructed lovely thought i am in a new home it's not only in a building i am in a community new home and then it talks about new conduct that's what i have titled it let's go forward belonging to the people of god which talks about harmony new life uh, it talks about uh, in first uh, passage the word of god is so important when we talk about new life okay that's what uh, Paul, uh, peter was talking about the triune god and their involvement now here comes to the another important factor of being born again talking about rebirth talking about a new ch uh, child of god that comes verse uh, 22 now that you have purified yourself by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other love one another one another deeply from the heart for you have been born again not of perishable seed but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of god word of god power of god's word Verse 25, but the word of the Lord endures for ever. This passage is clearly talks about the power of God's word. Dear brothers and sisters, we cannot afford to miss God's word when we are leading another person to Christ. Okay? One of the things I really wanted to highlight here is my concern on our gospel meetings, our sharing of the gospel. How? we lead other person uh, to become a believer clearly the triune god is important and now it's about words word of god okay verse 33 very clearly says for you have been born again not of perishable seed but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of god very powerful take time to have this words word verse study take this verse and study You'll, you'll be excited. Okay? Normally we take passages and study. Better to take some of the verses like this and to have a study on that. I love to do that. Secondly, it talks about pursue brotherly love. Pursue brotherly love. Here starts the harmony. Again, I tell you, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another, deeply from the heart not in the lips not in just giving some money not in hands from your heart beautiful beautiful pursue brotherly love this morning i had a real privilege of uh, sitting under great leaders of our nation evangelical leaders who are talking about church response uh, in this uh, corona time 
okay what is church uh, the church response to this uh, covid 19 uh, somebody from hyderabad great man of god was teaching the biblical understanding of it he talked about reverend vinay samuel okay he was a preacher in our USI 50th Golden, uh, Golden Jubilee Conference uh, at Vijayawada. Great man of God. Powerful this morning. The biblical understanding of suffering and uh, what is the church response. There he mentioned about common community, brotherly love. He was talking about it. And we need to grow in that. My dear brothers and sisters, easy to preach. Easy to take a Bible study like this before sitting uh, in my laptop. How much I can grow in brotherly love. We all have challenges. Devil is active in dividing, but take time to pursue brotherly love. Third thing, he talks about in chapter 2 verse 1, very clearly mentions, put away the evil things. You'll be surprised to see that some of the things are Maybe we can call it as simple thing. Hypocrisy, envy, slander. Okay, normally we don't take that. Adultery, yes. Drinking, smoking, all sorts of outward things, we call it as evil things. Okay, but Peter here talks about words like malice. Deceit, uh, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. What is a context? In the context of brotherly love. As you love your brother, as you have to grow in a spiritual uh, harmony, get away all these things. Do you want a parallel passage? Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. Beautiful passage, beautiful passage. In fact, you can go up to 14, okay? Uh, Colossians chapter 1 verses, uh, Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 14. There he uses two, Paul uses two beautiful phrases. Put off and put on. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 14. Put off and put on. And here I want to call it as put away the evil things. If you want to grow in harmony, definitely, definitely, we have to put off all these five things. Then he talks about new baby, part of God's family. I really like it. I really like it. You are a child. You need to grow. Go back to God's word and you grow in the family. Okay, so the, uh, if you are born spiritually, the rebirth talks about you are born in a family. I'm sure you have studied Rick Warren's five purposes of uh, uh, Christian life. Five purposes. Purpose-driven life. If you are clear about these five purposes, you will have a joy of leading a very good life. He talks about it there. We are part of God's family, part of God's family. Let's go forward. We have some more points to discuss. In the third, uh, uh, in the continuation, we talk about new spiritual house. I wanted to take it separately. Otherwise, I could have taken it till verse 10. I want to talk about it in the context of Peter talking about stone. Okay. Many of the commentators connected up to 10. But consciously, I want to make difference between house and home. Spiritual house, living stone, the cornerstone, the precious stone, Jesus Christ. If you have believed in him, that is a precious stone. Many of them don't believe, even in our uh, evangelistic camps, evangelistic retreats, and in our evangelistic programs, we present Jesus Christ very clearly. People are rejecting him. Unfortunate. They are hitting a strong stone. That's what Peter says. And definitely a group of people in our evangelistic retreats and evangelistic camps 
believe in Christ, the precious stone. And he is a living stone. That's what Peter is talking about. Then he talks about living stones. It's in plural. You and me. You and me. Then he talks about the building of the church. And in this morning, I have a great, greatest joy of hearing my dear brother, Dr. Prabhu Singh, talking about, in that same meeting, talking about church. Lovely, lovely exposition he has given. Okay? Church responds in this time of uh, tremendous uh, uh, whole world, whole nation is shaking. And what is the response of the church? He beautifully brought out the difference between community of God's people and the building. Okay? That leads me to the fourth point. Both he and my dear brother, one of my mentors, the C.B. Samuel, talks about it. Churches are closed, but now we understand what it really means to worship the Lord. Okay? We don't have a priest, but at home, we have a priest. The C.B. Samuel was telling that many of them could not pray, and many of them don't have uh, at family prayers. But now, as the churches are closed, they have to learn how to pray, and some of them have to have their uh, housekeeping open for uh, Sunday worship. That's what uh, my brothers, uh, C.B. Samuel and Prabhu Singh were talking about. Building is one thing, but community is one thing. But let me talk about the building. When we join together as living stones, we are constructing the kingdom of God. My dear brother and sister, you are one of the living stones. You are building God's kingdom. Are you alive? Are you alert? Are you a strong stone? So that others can build on you. Otherwise, the kingdom of God is shaking. One weak link makes a difficult challenge. So remember, you are a living stone. We are building God's kingdom. At the same time, community of God's people, we are priesthood and sacrifices. What does it mean? It is not in the Old Testament uh, temple they are doing it. Now, as a New Testament believer in the church, in the community, we are, all the people, our believers, are known to be the priesthood. We take it very seriously. Please meditate. The next pa passage, verses 9 and 10. We are called out from darkness to light. We are called out to be insignificant, to be significant. Peter is using uh, the concept from Hosea, chapter 1, uh, the passage comes very clearly. Verse 10 is very beautiful. Be because lack of time, I'm just skipping it. You have to read that. Hosea chapter 1, verse uh, 10. Okay? He talks about, you are not my people, but they will be called children of living God. Okay? And uh, called out from insign insignificance to significant. Called out of no mercy, but now we have mercy. For what? We are chosen as a new community. It's our privilege. It's our privilege. At the same time, we need to obey the Lord. And we have a tremendous responsibility. Service. Service. My dear brothers and sisters, in this time of uh, tough situations going on around our community and our, in our own towns and cities, I don't know about your state. Even my son was telling that our colony is closed now. We cannot go out of the colony. That's the way things are happening. Okay. And in this uh, uh, crucial time, we cannot think of the church building. But are we thinking of the new community we are part of? Let's serve as community of God's people. Let me close with that uh, last thought on new conduct. Yesterday itself, I referred these two verses. We meditate on it. I just wanted to remind it. It's a new conduct in the context of the hope, in the context of the holiness, in the context of the harmony. We need to have a new life. It is reminding of our heavenly citizenship. Okay? Heavenly citizenship. 
if you have a passport you say that i am an indian you have a passport um, heavenly citizenship don't forget that keep your passport carefully disciplined life mixes of spiritual warfare tremendous warfare is going on within us within our family within our community okay devil is active it is not between flesh and blood that's what paul is talking about darkness everywhere spiritual warfare wage war against you be careful have a disciplined life disciplined obedience lastly we are called to show our influence of god to others our influence of god on others is needed in this time people are looking at us and they are wanted to put us down but god in his mercy helping us to glorify god through our life let's continue to go into study two important words submission and uh, suffering but today we looked at salvation and sanctification let me close with this uh, application part how is my faith and hope in hard times i know that you are a believer and i know that you are a saved person i know that you are in the process of sanctification but what about your faith and uh, hope in hard times secondly i want to ask you what are the challenges maybe we can ask ourselves we have for not leading a holy life we are set up for god but we are not in a position to lead a holy life what are the challenges we have thirdly what are the steps we take to grow as a community of god's people my dear brothers christian harmony he said it's an immediate need it's a big need now no church no fellowship meetings and few months later or few weeks later we are going back to our eu meetings and we are going back to our eu meetings and we are going back to the church we do not know which with what face we are going back but in this time of being at home what are the steps we can take to grow as a community of god's people may the lord help each one of us to take this message seriously let's pray father in heaven we are thankful to you for the great writing of peter powerful passage powerful passage thank you for reminding us about hope thank you for reminding about holiness thank you for reminding us about harmony help me lord help each one of us to take this message seriously so that we can enjoy our christian life and we can enjoy our christian ministry to that end we commit ourselves to you thanking you for ministering to us in jesus precious name we humbly pray amen amen